Welcome to Leaping Larry's Revolutionary Reading Theatre. I, I am often looking for music in which to fill the chamber, Bop, not gonna lie. All right, well, today we are reading from, um, as you know, on the giving priority to ideological work is essential for accomplishing socialism. We're on chapter three of this work here. We're gonna finish it today, right now. You're witnessing it. Here we go. Kim Jong Il said at a talk. Wait, this. We're on page thirty-two. This was. Oh, this is just a straight-up work that he gave in nineteen ninety-five. Okay, perfect. Here we go. Socialist society, ideological work, and. Let's take note here that he's uh, specifying in socialist society, ideological work must be carried out in accordance with the principles and methods which meet the intrinsic need of socialism. Intrinsic requirements. When the task and content of ideological work have been correctly defined, success in this work depends on how the principles and methods used. It is only when ideological work is carried out in accordance with the principles and methods which meet the intrinsic requirements of socialism that all members of society can be successfully transformed by teaching them socialist ideology. Socialist society, ideological work must be carried out vigorously as the concern of the whole party, state, and society under the leadership of the working class party. Our ideological work is an undertaking to solidly arm the masses of people with socialist ideology, thus to consolidate the socialist ideological bulwark throughout the revolution and construction, and give full play to the masses' revolutionary enthusiasm and creativity. Therefore, all party organs and state organs, working people's organizations, and other institutions must work in accordance with their mission and duty to equip the popular masses with socialist ideology. Officials from all sectors and echelons must step up ideological work, political work among the masses. Shared values that they each have a responsibility to each other in the revolution and a responsibility to the revolution itself. Yeah, exactly, Bob. The most important principle of ideological work is to ensure the firm leadership of the working class party over ideological work. The working class party is the supreme political organization which leads the revolution and construction. Remember in any communist society, socialist society, the workers party is the leading party constitutionally, generally. Without the party's leadership, ideological work cannot be carried out in a unified way to meet the requirements of socialism. It is only when the party's leadership over ideological work is completely ensured that it becomes possible to prevent any heterogeneous idea from infiltrating into the ideological field and to defend the revolutionary and socialist character of ideological work and make a single idea socialist ideology prevail throughout society. A working class party must adhere to ideological work and must not withdraw even a single step from its leadership over this work. Any compromise or concession in the ideological field means degeneration and defeat, weakening or denying the working class party's leadership over ideological work is an attempt to destroy socialist ideological bulwark and to introduce and propagate reactionary bourgeois ideology. A working class party must categorically oppose and reject all machinations to deny its leadership over ideological work. It must exercise unified control 
and unitary guidance over all ideological world. As the capitalists do in capitalist society, right? A working class party must itself organize and carry out ideological work through all levels of party organizations. And again, take note here that he's specifying through all levels of party organizations itself, right? Then it's spread. How does it spread through the state organs? Well, it spreads through to the state organs in much the same way that the policy does through the cadres persuading people that they serve and work with on various state organs draw nearer to that, right? Because again, remember, we have to build socialism, especially after, especially once we have um, control of of the state apparatus. Once we have a, a socialist state apparatus, then you have to use persuasion to draw more and more people and build the socialist party into a mass party, which you can only do voluntarily. Which is why some places, which is why like some revolutions like USSR, um, certain stages could be completed faster than in some other states, places, right? Although USSR made the mistake of never really realizing this and they allowed like the mosquito net to come down and bourgeois ideological infiltration to just basically... To go wild in their society without any kind of like ideological education of their own that was relative to their conditions as I always say and it like led to this divorce yeah exactly Bob and the thing that makes communism and as Kim Jong-il points out earlier in this work the thing that makes communism and socialism so attractive and so easy to be accepted by everybody is that it champions everybody's interests, right? So it's not like capitalist ideology where you have to convince people that this is correct because it's trying to justify a class thing, right? Because it's trying to justify some class exploitation or some sort of oppression. So therefore you can never convince convince everybody of like these capitalist ideologies because they are untrue but because socialist ideology is scientific and true because it champions the interests of everybody it absolutely can and will be accepted by everybody moreover it must supervise the ideological and cultural areas such as the media art and literature just again, in, in a capitalist society, media, art, and literature, they're all integral parts of the capitalist state via them being of all, largely dictated and, and the, the like popularity or whatever steered by corporations, right? When it comes to media, art, and literature, like with, or they, or they are corporations themselves as well as state organs, working people's organizations, and educational institutions, so that they educate the masses efficiently in accordance with their mission and duty. As, uh, as Che said, we have to turn the whole society into a socialist school. The media and art and literature are powerful ideological weapons for educating, organizing, and mobilizing the masses. Supervised doesn't mean censored necessarily, no. But it can mean, I mean, censorship is all right, right? At the same time, there's nothing wrong with censorship. And if somebody is like posting some like overtly imperialist, like fucking fascistic or colonial bullshit, then yeah, they should absolutely be able to be like, yeah, no, you're not, you're not having that published, sir. Come with us. The, 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 the people might just want to have a word with you, you know? That's okay, too. That's okay. No? The education's all right. Have fun. See you next Tuesday type of thing. In socialist society, yeah, instead of, I mean, instead of, like, uh, Instead of the hollow version of the people, like when, when they say the people versus in socialist society, it's much more meaningful 
Because the people assign their own fucking judges in socialism. Socialist society, the media, art, and literature, and all other ideological and cultural channels must fully serve the purpose of defending and advancing socialism to meet the masses' desire for independence under the party's leadership. By the way, if you like my work, consider subscribing because you're about to get an ad break in five minutes. So if you'd like to avoid the ads, consider subscribing. You get some alone time with Larry and some awesome tiny little pictures. If ideological and cultural channels depart from the guidance and control of the working class party in socialist society, they will be used as counter-revolutionary instruments. This is proved by the fact that in those countries which were building socialism, traitors to socialism and reactionaries took ideological and cultural channels into their own hands and used them to attack socialism. Mama knows. Mama knows all about it. Ask Mama. The working class party must keep the media, arts, and literature, and all other ideological and cultural channels under tight control. It must steadily enhance their role so that they will, so they all credibly fulfill their mission and duty on the socialist ideological front. The socialist state guides and administers all spheres of social life, particularly politics, economics, and culture. In a unified way. The socialist state's role as an ideological and cultural educator is one of its basic roles. While guiding and administering all spheres of social life, such as state administration and economic management, socialist state must adhere to socialist principles, must bring the advantages of socialism into full play, and thus fully ensure good material lives for people to meet the requirements of socialism. It must also create conditions for people to enjoy wholesome and rich ideological and cultural lives to the full. State organs must carefully draw up socialist laws and regulations and establish a well-organized system of socialist administration in all areas. They must guide and control people so that they willingly observe laws and administrative orders. Socialist state's guidance and administration of all areas of social life on socialist principles and in accordance with the requirements of socialism is highly instrumental in helping people to acquire socialist ideology in practice and helping them become accustomed to socialist life. This guidance, makes, this guidance and administration also is also an important guarantee which makes it impossible for obsolete ideas to be revived in socialist Society or to infiltrate from the outside. And now this part right here is so important because remember how I said like what ends up happening in socialist society, people tend to become comfortable, especially later generations, right? And they come to like not realize what was there before socialism or what the revolution has brought them. And so they, of course, demand more and more luxuries and and more and more like consumer goods and stuff like this. And and if you're not careful and if you have not properly ideologically educated people, they can be at this par at this position where they are susceptible to being fooled by capitalist propaganda. If you're not properly combining ideological education with combating the inf inf infiltration of imperialists, which they do through NGOs and all this other Shit, right like like constantly trying to bring shit into the revolution country. that feeds the children gets my support exactly lasso welcome in welcome in so you have to you, you have to fight against that like pizza hut pizza yeah yeah you don't want your people to like to start pining for Pizza Hut pizza. It's all for one motherfucker and one motherfucker for all my fuckers everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So you have to properly educate them that you don't want to trade your socialist healthcare and your socialist education for Pizza Hut pizza, you know? You have to properly educate them. And then they themselves will be able to identify that. And even more, if there's renegades 
and counter-revolutionaries in their party with proper ideological education, the people themselves will be able to identify those elements in the party and get rid of them, use recall and other such um, tools that they have at their disposal, rather than opposing their own working class party, which is, which is basically, again, that's like what the imperialists the did there. Revolution! The imperialists in USSR convinced people to oppose their own party because, and, and the renegades and the counter-revolutionaries and the, uh, the power abusers and the bureaucrats that had wormed their way into party leadership did not help this any. But if people had been properly ideologically educated, they could have just got rid of them and kept their party and kept the democratic centralism and all this other stuff, right? But they were confused, unfortunately. So that's why I say, like, yeah, USSR was overthrown, but there was an undermining and there was um, there was mistakes and stuff that led to it able to become overthrown, right? Like, imperialist actions are what paved the way for the overthrow to happen. So in many, we have to really understand the mistakes that USSR made and we have to learn from those mistakes. Well... Fun fact, yesterday's eclipse holds importance to native people. As on this eclipse 1,000 years ago, the great law of peace was ratified and this was where communism came from and part of the U.S. Constitution was copied from. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Although, you know, the U.S. Constitution. The fact that Debbie Westman Scheitz is, is in prominent positions in the Dem Party tells you everything you need to know about how shit works in the U.S. Yep. Well, democracy for the slave owners. I mean, that's, li that's liberal bourgeois democracy. That's the same democracy that Canada has today. Democracy for the slave owners, exclusion for everybody else. We're the targets of their democracy. Whereas our democ for our democracy, the target of our democracy is the imperialists, the colonists, and the bourgeoisie. Because, again, democracy itself is a class weapon, right? The, fa the thing was, democracy rose up in the struggle against wealth and, and the power that comes along with wealth. And the bourgeoisie went, okay, how can we uh, distort this so that it serves our interests? While at the same time convincing the people that they have democracy. Yeah, I mean, the, the bourgeoisie love copying some shit like that to try and uh, make it sound like they're doing good stuff, right? While at the same time carrying forward with their fucking genocide. Yeah. Love that. They love to co-opt our shit. And then... And then we have our to say that socialism doesn't work is to overlook the fact that it did work and it worked for hundreds of millions of people. And then our fake so socialists love to get convinced by it, for example. And then they and then they uh, they act like land back is itself an NGO fucking an NGO funded like fucking project or something. But you pointing out. How, all the reasons why they're completely full of shit. But, you know, it's what serves their interests, so it's highly uh, convincing for them. Much the way, like, for the bourgeoisie. We, we, we shouldn't really be concerned whether Elon Musk and these other bourgeois motherfuckers, whether they believe their shit or not, right? That's not that important, but a lot of them do believe their shit. A lot of them do believe, like, the myth, the capitalist mythology. And the reason is because it's very self-serving, right? Like something that's very self-serving, very like reaffirming to you personally. Fuck it, the Amazon! It's very convincing, right? So yeah, Elon Musk and then they probably do absolutely believe their own bullshit. Elon Musk thinks he's like a libertarian, you know? Like, they definitely think that a lot of them do believe their shit because it's just very self-serving and very, 
and therefore very convincing for them. Anyway, let us continue with her read here. <laughs> well, there, uh, we appreciate you enjoying the sound alerts, Sue. Oh, God, Bob, yeah. Well, fuck. We just have to. We just have to alert, el elect new uh, representatives of the bourgeois state. Yes, that will that will solve all of our problems. Thank you. Am I planning on smoking pot this morning? Yes. I'm always planning on smoking pot. The socialist state must work to develop economic and cultural exchange and cooperation with various countries around the world, based on the principles of equality and mutual benefit. At the same time, it must guard against the infiltration of reactionary bourgeois ideology and decadent bourgeois culture and ways of life. State organs forget socialist principles in their economic and cultural exchange with other countries, and organize economic and cultural exchange and cooperation carelessly, this will open Let's the go, door Let's to go. the infiltration Smokes. of imperialist ideology and culture. The consequences would be serious. Socialism would be jeopardized. The socialist state must adopt administrative and legal measures to protect the socialist system and people from the infiltration of imperialist ideology and culture. Bob's carefully watching that timer. Let me grab my tray. Hold on. My tray. I have to empty my vap my vaporizer. I love I love it. Thank you, comrades. Very much appreciate you keeping me nice and uh, nice and um, tuned, as we'll say. We'll say keeping me nice and tuned, tuned up. In socialist society, working people's organizations are political organizations which comprise different classes and strata of society. Their basic duty is to give ideological education to their members. Oh, I think it's just right. In capitalist society, where exploitation and oppression prevail, in the interests of different classes and strata conflict, the basic duty of mass organizations is to fight for the interests of their own class and stratum. In contrast, in socialist society, where class antagonisms have been eliminated, the mission and duty of working people's organizations are fundamentally different. Because people are the masters of state and society in socialist society, and because different sections of the population share common interests, people from different social strata have their interests included in the state and public interests, and the prosperity of the whole society makes them happy. For this reason, working people's organizations in socialist society have the basic mission of educating and leading their members to carry out the responsibility and role of masters of state and society. If working people's organizations in socialist society only work for the interests of their own members, as in capitalist society, they will counterpose the interests of an individual class or stratum to the party, state, and public interest, and such organizations will go against the state and socialism. The parties in some countries which were building socialism failed to rally broad sections of the masses behind them. 
They suffered defeat in their confrontation with counter-revolution, mainly because they had guided working people's organizations inefficiently. A working class party must lead working people's organizations along the right path and make sure that they educate their members properly in accordance with their mission and characteristics. And that they rally their members closely behind the party and mobilize them all in socialist construction. Oda Potsam enjoying it vicariously. Oh, we have shared, yep. Yeah. Well, don't worry. Our common grass interests, um, you, I will make sure. Here, extra, extra hard puff for you here. That's for you, Q. A working class party must pay particular attention to encouraging youth organizations to play their role proper properly. The future of revolution and socialism depends on how the new generation is prepared. In socialist society, the youth organization, as the political reserve of the working class party, has the honorable duty of fully preparing the younger people as reliable successors to socialism. Do, what's funny is about two years ago, I would not have been able to do that. I quit smoking two years ago, and it fucking helped big time for that, for me, anyway. Now I can really rail on that bong. If youth organizations are preoccupied with various administrative and practical affairs, instead of channeling their efforts into their proper duties, they cannot educate the younger generation in socialist ideology. I will still smoke tobacco, but I do not smoke cigarettes. <laughs> There's a difference. If they weaken ideological work, the younger generation will only seek their own comfort instead of working devotedly for the party and the revolution, for the country and the people. And it may be affected by the wind of capitalist liberalism blowing in from the outside. And when I smoke tobacco, it's grown locally. And I, it's not smoked in cigarette form. A working class party must strengthen its leadership of youth organizations so that they work hard to educate their members ideologically in accordance with their own duties and young people's characteristics so that they admirably train them all as successors to the revolution. <laughs> In socialist society, educational institutions must direct a lot of effort to educating people, particularly young people, ideologically. Because younger people are all enrolled in a particular part of the education system in socialist society, Educational institutions have the very heavy duty of educating and training them. Socialist education is not the practical work of teaching merely knowledge and technology, but an important undertaking to train revolutionaries. Socialist society, educational institutions must teach younger people advanced science and technology and give them knowledge in accordance with the principles of socialist pedagogy. At the same time, educational institutions must intensify ideological education and bring younger people up into staunch revolutionaries who are loyal to socialism.
In socialist society, officials from all sectors and echelons must carry out ideological work, political work. Political work is the first process of all work. Only when political work aimed at educating and stimulating people to act is carried out efficiently is it possible to succeed in the revolutionary task in hand by stimulating the masses' revolutionary enthusiasm and creativity. And this is true today as well. As I, as I constantly say, feeding people and, and, and um, doing all and, and uh, helping them economically is a great thing and a good thing to do but it must be properly combined with revolutionary education in order to, for it to be properly revolutionary work, if you, if you want to call it. Which means, of course, in the West, oftentimes pushing people closer to uh, the leadership of First Nations and other people fighting against colonialism. And people towards being in favor of that democratic revolution. Political work is not the concern of only party workers and officials in charge of ideological work. In socialist society, all officials, no matter in what sector and on which level they are, and no matter what they do, must do political work. Political, economic, cultural, military, and all other officials must regard political work, work with people, as their important revolutionary duty. It's the first part of the revolutionary tasks, and they must carry out this work with vigor. In, all, in our country today, all party organizations, state organs, ideological and cultural bodies, working people's organizations, and educational institutions are transforming party members and other working people and youth and children by teaching them socialist ideology in accordance with their respective mission and duty. Officials from all sectors and on all levels are successfully carrying out their revolutionary tasks by giving precedence to political work. Future 2. We must vigorously promote ideological work by regarding it as the concern of the whole party and state, and the whole of society, under the party's leadership. We must strengthen the ideological bulwark of socialism. In socialist society, the work of educating and transforming people must be made the concern of the masses themselves. Ideological transformation is for the good of the popular masses and must be conducted by the masses themselves. Since the popular masses are the masters of their own destiny, they must themselves transform their own ideology and must undertake ideological transformation as masters. Ideological transformation can be successful only when it becomes the concern of the masses themselves and only when the broad section of the masses take an active part in it. When turning tra ideological transformation into the work of the popular masses themselves, it is very important to vigorously promote various kinds of mass ideological transformation campaigns. Such a campaign is carried out by broad sections of the masses for their mutual education. At every stage of revolutionary development, our party has proposed and promoted a mass ideological transformation campaign to meet the requirements of our revolution and to suit the masses' political and ideological preparedness. As after liberation, the party carried out a general ideological mobilization movement for nation building, do away with the survivals of Japanese imperialist ideas and feudal ideas, and to arm people with the idea of nation building. In the post-war period of socialist construction, it promoted the Camilla movement and achieved brilliant success in educating and transforming people on socialist lives. Today, when the whole cause of modeling the whole society on the Juche idea has come to the fore, our party is developing all members of society Juche-type communist revolutionaries by conducting the Three Revolution Red Flag Movement to exhilarate the three revolutions, ideological, technological, and cultural.
In our country, the broad masses take an active part in ideological transformation campaign, and everyone educates another. Cadres as well as the masses are influenced by the communist deeds of ordinary workers, peasants. And commanders are also influenced by the heroic deeds of ordinary soldiers. In the future too, we must continue to promote the mass ideological transformation campaign to meet the requirements of revolutionary development and to suit the masses' preparedness. An important aspect of the mass ideological transformation campaign is to encourage and develop positive examples spread them widely among the masses. Positive examples are a silent criticism of the negative, and they arouse strong sympathy in people. Socialist society where the positive predominates, the main stress must be put on the method of influencing people by positive examples, and educating and transforming the masses. The path of arduous and honorable struggle along which our revolution has advanced has produced many genuine communist revolutionaries and heroes who devoted themselves totally to their party and leader, to their country and people. Our anti-Japanese revolutionary predecessors and the heroes of the Fatherland Liberation War, those who distinguished themselves in socialist construction and unassuming heroes are brilliant examples of communist revolutionaries. Okay, Mama, good luck. Our party has worked hard to see that all party members and other working people follow the noble ideological and moral qualities of our revolutionary predecessors and heroes, people of merit and labor innovators. The proud situation in which noble communist traits are now being brought into full play among our people clearly shows the vitality of educating people through the influence of positive examples in the mass ideological campaign. We must press ahead with the ideological transformation campaign among the masses to steadily transform people's ideology, and we must ensure that the noble quality of working and living in a communist way is displayed to a higher degree throughout society. Ideological education must be carried out through study and participation in organization in close combination with revolutionary practice. Study, participation in organizations, and revolutionary practice are important links in the whole chain of ideological education, as well as effective methods of ideological education. By the way, this part here is true even in today's society, where you live today. And this is what I keep mentioning about like Midwestern Marx, right? And how like when Eddie talks about his whole experience of radicalizing himself was writing a paper in college and all this other shit and then talks down to other people says being um, communist college, college kids, I just have to laugh. And it's really reflected in the way they get so deep within these th this theory. And like I say, they're almost like Marx is just talking to other Marxists, right? Where it's like how many Marxists can dance on the head of a surplus value instead of like actually doing like a Marxist analysis of our society and our conditions. It's like it's 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 and that's why it's like this overly like almost academic almost in a lot of ways. Whereas if you go ahead and read something like Horn, you'll notice a, a significant difference in the way Horn writes talks about history in a way that like. Midwestern Marx tends to. And I think a large reason is a lack of practice, right? They have lots and lots of theory. Same with like, like Haas is someone who's read tons and tons of theory by seemingly by the way that he talks and shit. But then when you actually like get down to it and realize that there's absolutely no creativity in his theory, and these are just dogmatic flunkyists you start to realize that they have a lack of practice, right? They have a divorce of practice and theory. By studying people cult. Exactly, aced, exactly.
by studying, people cultivate themselves ideologically and acquire the ideological and mental sustenance they need for the revolution. Only when they study hard can people acquire a firm revolutionary outlook on the world and continue to succeed in the revolutionary struggle and in construction. Socialist society, everyone must take studying part of their daily routine. They must study regularly and vigilantly. In our country today, a well-regulated system whereby the party, people, and army all study has been set up and is run in a regular way. All members of society regularly take part in study sessions, public lectures, and other collective study sessions without exception, and study in earnest. Studying has become a daily routine for people and social attitude in our country. We must strengthen the revolutionary atmosphere of studying throughout the party and society and make sure that everyone studies tirelessly. Imagine. Life in a revolutionary organization is the crucible of ideological training and a school of revolutionary education. People receive political ideological education and are trained in a revolutionary way through life in organization. The organizational lives of party members and working people are political ideological lives to realize their desire for political integrity situation where every member of society belongs to and takes part in a political organization is a way of political ideological life suited to the inherent nature of socialist society. All working people, young people, students, and school children in our country belong to a party organization, workers, working people's organization, youth organization, or children's organization. They lead organizational lives and receive political ideological education, thus glorifying their political lives. Success in educating and transforming people through the inculculation of socialist ideology in our country is mainly due to the fact that every member of society is educated through life and political organization. We must ensure that all party members, working people, young people, students and school children take part in an organization voluntarily and in good faith, with the correct attitude toward their organization. A person's ideology is tempered and consolidated through evolutionary practice, and it is verified in practice. The remnants of outmoded ideas lingering in people's minds find their expression in practice. Only when ideological education, closely combined with revolutionary practice, can we eliminate outmoded ideas from people's minds and successfully arm them with socialist ideology? Our party finds an effective solution to the problem of educating and transforming people through practice in making the process of performing revolutionary tasks a process of ideologically cultivating and training them. We must make sure that party members and working people learn socialist ideology, reinforce it, and train themselves ideologically through their practical struggle, for their country's prosperity and development, and through their worthwhile socialist lives. Good morning, Comrade Bobby. Welcome in. Welcome in. Get cozy. Finish out an upper read for this morning. We must put an end to administrative, formulistic practices in ideological work, and do it in an original and effective way. Administrative and formalistic practices are very harmful in that they have nothing in common with how the working class party works. They are intolerable in ideological work. A working class party cannot educate and transform people if it forces its ideology on people by using its authority on the grounds that it has come to power or if it sticks to a form and style that is devoid of substance in its ideological work. Carrying out ideological work in an administrative and formalistic way is a mistaken work attitude, a wrong tendency, to do it in an easygoing way without making an effort. 
administrative and formulistic practices in ideological work make it impossible to transform people's ideology and may end in the collapse of the ideological bulwark of socialism. Ideological education, socialist society, must always be done explanation, persuasion, in accordance with the intrinsic requirements of socialism and the characteristics of the work of ideological transformation. By its very nature, an ideology can neither be forced nor imposed on people by administrative methods. A working class party must enlighten people and educate them patiently through explanation and persuasion so that they accept socialist ideology as their own ideology and make it their unshakable faith. It is important to carry out various forms of ideological education using varied methods, suit people's specific qualities and their preparedness. Since people's level of ideological consciousness, their intellectual qualifications, characters, and tastes differ from one another and their life experience, and working conditions are not the same, ideological education cannot be successful if it is done using one and the same method. Ideological education must be carried out in a realistic way, in forms and using methods which suit people's specific features and their preparedness. I mean, sometimes using online free and outdated formalistic pa patterns, free from outdated and formalistic patterns. Truthfulness, scientific accuracy, and kindness should be guaranteed in the prepare preparation of all materials for the information work and agitation, and short courses, public lectures, and exploratory talks should be held after full pre preparation. Hey Kay, welcome in, comrade. Great to see you. For officials to carry out effective ideological work, Kindness, exactly. <laughs> so important. Instead of like saying slurs or inviting people onto your communist platform, people who use slurs like to refer to other people. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Looking at you, Jackson Hinkle, Midwestern Marx. I don't know why you'd want your Marx to be mid or Western, but that's just me, I guess. For officials to carry out effective ideological work, they must acquire the habit of mixing closely with the masses, educating them while, work, while working with them and breathing the same air as them. In the early days, our party proposed that the whole party should go among the masses and ensure that officials went among the masses and carried out ideological education. Just like the anti-Japanese guerrillas. All our officials must consider their duty and obligation as being to go among the masses as required by the party's traditional way of working and to mix regularly with them and efficiently educate them and transform them by means of socialist ideology, not go around pandering and tailing their absolute most reactionary fucking harmful ideas and thinking that's going to somehow educate them. Like I always say, the funniest thing about these goddamn pat socks is the way they act like us trying to educate the masses about um, uh, about settler colonialism, the history of, of USSA, and the fact that it's not a legitimate nation and shit is us thinking all the masses are reactionary. But it's not thinking all the masses are reactionary to think that you have to pander and tail their most reactionary, bourgeois reactionary ideas in order to appeal to them and bring them over to our side. You know, that's not seeing the masses in, as inherently re reactionary, but thinking that they can become educated by revolutionary ideas is apparently. Like nah, bros, you got you guys got it. They got it fucking backwards, right? Like they literally have an ass backwards. If you think that the only way to appeal to the masses is to tail reactionary bourgeois ideas and use that as a means to bring them over or fool them or whatever, you're the one who thinks the masses are inherently reactionary.
putting the main stress on ideology and giving definite priority to ideological work is a principle our party consistently maintains while leading the revolution in construction. That or your reactionary yourself. Exactly, Marge. In the future, too, our party will intensify ideological work and thoroughly implement the principle of giving priority to ideological work over all other affairs. It, is, it will thus safeguard and brilliantly accomplish Juche socialism. Oh shit, IOF is pulling out of Khan Yunus. Really? Why is that mar powerful? Did, did they give a reason? Socialism is the future of humankind. And the socialist movement is a great movement of the popular masses. Create a new independent world. The socialist movement develops and emerges victorious through the conscious struggle of the popular masses. The world socialist movement will inevitably triumph thanks to the struggle of the popular masses who are awakened to socialist ideology, strength of which unites them. Here we go. That's that. That's the read. It's all for one motherfucker and one motherfucker for all my fuckers everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, it was reinvaded. Of course communist. it was. Oh, really? Yep. Big communist. Big, big communist. Oh. <laughs>